I've had this PET 2001N for about 10 or 15 years now, I think. If I remember right, it was given to me by a co-worker who said it was a project his father had given up on. Then it sat in my garage until about two years ago when I finally decided to do something with it. As you can see in these photos, it was in really rough shape. There was a lot of rust and it was missing some important parts like the keyboard. The CRT appeared to be in good shape, but the deflection coil was ruined and most of the parts were missing from the monitor PCB. I cleaned it up and I did my best to remove the worst of the rust. It looked much better on the outside, but there was still a lot of corrosion inside and some significant gouges in the paint. The PCB in it was actually from an 8032. I was able to get that board working, but it didn't really belong in this 2001, so I decided to try and find a real 2001 logic board, and I sold that 8032 board to someone who needed it. It took a while, but eventually I found a spare monitor PCB with a yoke, and later I found a Type-N keyboard. All I needed was a logic board, then in May, the Future was 8-bit announced the new Mini-Pet. That finally gave me the push I needed to roll up my sleeves and get this project started. I decided I would go ahead and get the case repainted. So I stripped it down to its nuts and bolts, and I drilled out the rivets in the hinge to separate the top and bottom. Removed the screen bezel and the rubber feet. I did my best to carefully remove the labels. I used a heat gun on the metal behind the labels, and I tried to minimize the angle when I was peeling to avoid curling. Removing the case badge was a real challenge. It started out well, but uh, in the end it was damaged during removal. I might be able to repair it, but if not, I have a reproduction badge ready. I took it to a local shop that does powder coating, and I had them sandblast it to remove the old paint and the corrosion before recoating it. Usually I prefer to keep things as close to the original as possible, but since I'm replacing the guts with new parts, I thought, why not go all out and replace as much as I can with new parts? And since I'm not trying to keep things original, I decided against matching the original color, and I went with a brighter white semi-gloss. I think it looks pretty good. Got a new power switch, actually a couple different ones to choose from. New fuse holder, new power cord. Went to the hardware store and got all new screws and nuts, and washers, new rubber feet, new plastic standoffs. I want to start with the base, and the first thing I want to do is uh, attach the rubber feet to raise it up a little bit. The new rubber feet are a very close match to the original. The originals have these metal inserts in here, but those were damaged during removal. There's the four new feet attached, screwed down tight with some Loctite on there. They stick up a little bit, but honestly I don't think they stick up more than the original rivets did. Next I'll do the electrical because it's just going to be a whole lot easier without the top half on. Power cord, power switch, fuse holder. These grounding lugs here, I'm going to have to take the Dremel and uh, take some of the paint off around the grounding lug there so I can make a good ground connection. It's actually really hard to get in there with the Dremel and the wire brush wasn't really doing much against this uh, powder coat. So I had to get in there actually with a little file and uh, a little sanding stick. That should be sufficient to make contact there. And I've put some dielectric grease on there to prevent it from corroding. I have a couple of options for the power switch, a red and a black. I'm leaning towards using the red uh, just to add some color back there. This is the original switch compared. This is the new fuse holder compared with the original. The new one is a little bit lower profile so it shouldn't stick out from the case quite as far. These power switches are actually really hard to get in and out. Let's see if I can force this one in there.
I got some new uh, whatever you call these grommet strain relief power cord holder thingies. They make a tool to uh, to clamp these down to insert them, but I don't have one, so I'm gonna have to try to figure out a way to squeeze that down. You can squeeze them with some pliers, but then that kind of chews up the outside. And there's the new power cord switch and fuse holder attached. Got to wire them up now. The transformer has some corrosion on it here that I'm going to make an attempt to clean up. Here's the before. I'm going to use the uh, wire brush attachment on the Dremel. And here it is. I have to clean up with the Dremel tool. It, uh, it looks a little better. I want to clean up these wire ends, uh, get them ready to attach, but this ground wire is only hanging on by a few strands here, so I'm going to re, uh, redo this end, replace the connector. This wire is 22 gauge. The power cord here is 14 gauge, which is probably much bigger than it needs to be, but that's what I had available. Get these ground wires tied down. So I'll get the transformer lined up with the holes. the original electrical cover. I never I didn't have this one recoded. This is just the original paint. I'm going to do some electrical tests. Got the uh, meter set for continuity on the uh, ground lug. So check this lug back here. Oops. Looks like we've got good continuity to ground and this mounting post right here. Looks good. less than one ohm. And I'm connected to the AC line that goes to the monitor. So let's turn it on and see what happens. Get about 17 volts AC there. That's good. Something of a relief since this, uh, this transformer has never been tested since I've got it. And on the gray pair, 17 volts. And on the brown pair, also 17 volts. And with the mini pet power supply installed, 11.2 volts DC. So just about time to put the top shell on and uh, had to attach, reattach the uh, kickstand leg. This was originally held on by a rivet in which I had ground that off so that I could have this coated separately. Uh, there's two nuts on here, one on either side, tightened up against each other. Uh, and that keeps everything in place while keeping the uh, kickstand loose enough to move. Now to attach the top shell to the bottom, it was originally held on with rivets. But I've got some screws and some nuts, locking nuts. Try to 
get them started. to do the monitor. These plastic stems were originally melted on top of these washers to hold the front bezel in place, so I just use hot glue to reattach. I got the monitor PCB in here and I ran a ground wire over to the DAG ground and I uh, soldered the wires on the deflection coil. I, uh, I did a little searching online to see if I could find which wires went where. I found a photo of the back inside of a yoke like this one and attached the wires the right way. I hope. We got to uh, attach the socket. I've got the mini pad in there. I don't have it in permanently yet. The monitor cable connected. I also ran a ground wire down from the monitor. Any pet power supplies in there? Let's see what happens. Got the power cord plugged in. Fingers crossed. Whoo! We have a picture. It's a little out of focus, but uh, I should be able to adjust that. It works. That's a bit of a relief too because I had no idea if this uh, CRT was any good or the PCB. The brightness adjustment knob in the back here could be a cold solder joint, cracked solder joint, definitely flaky. So I'm going to have to take that apart and check that and spray the pot with some deoxid. Well, I got the picture straight and I tightened down the uh, the nut on the yoke there to uh, lock it in place. I uh, also resoldered the connection here on the brightness adjust pot. There was a crack solder joint there, so the picture is stable now. As far as the focus goes, there isn't much I can do about it. There is a jumper you can change the focus voltage, but it didn't make any difference. I think either the tube's worn out or this board just needs to be recapped. Here's what it looks like from the back now. I used double-sided tape to reapply the labels. Here's the inside. I have the, uh, the mini pet adhesive standoff stuck down. It's screwed down to the one mounting post in the back corner there. And I put the cassette number two 
connector over here on the side where we can get to it. And here it is next to my 77 2001. You can see the color difference is really noticeable. That's it for now. I'll leave you with some before and after photos. Thanks for watching.